but this but this is G-Stone. Well, it's kind of a delicacy to us in the summertime. Well, kind of what we're doing is we're looking in the crevices and cracks of rocks that sometimes you'll see them laying there. Sometimes there'll be one out crawling, trying to get away from the light, and then you can find them. Some of the things that we harvest were, were we understood them to, uh, to be medicine also, like the crawdads. If you, for one of the things that I was taught by my parents and my elders is that if, when my first baby was born, you know, then it's the teething pattern started. When you, when you clean these crawdads underneath the, the, underneath the head part right here, there is a yellow part. Yellow part is what we, you know, we were told growing up that the, the little, you can see what's yellow here. And what we were told to do, anytime our little ones were teething and they were having a hard time, just take it and mash it. You know, it, and it has an enzyme in it. And, and it's just something we've always been told to rub it on the baby's teeth and that te the, the uh, baby wouldn't have teething problems anymore. It's just what you believe in. It's what you understand growing up. Okay? But that's, and it's just part of the, part of the, uh, part of the guts. We call it the roux. A long time ago, Grandma would take these heads, tell us to put it in the, save them, put them in a pile. I'll, I'll get them, and then she would, uh, you know, she would boil them, make soup. Now the process of cleanness, you can see the intestine there. So open up, open up the fins, tear, make a little tear, and then there comes the intestine and it's thawed away. And then there's you have the, and I, you actually we have a holy here when you fry them. You, you know, I, I could eat him whole. A lot of our elders ate him whole. But my grandpa would say, you take them legs off. Well, well, that's what he called me, well, well. Take them legs off, well, well. And that way when he cooked him, he'd, he'd take the creature off and he would eat this part. And then he'd, he'd eat the tail whole since it was small like that. Yeah, crawdads come out at night and they're, whole, they're a lot easier to harvest, a lot easier to gig. And it makes, uh, you can always tell when people that go out at night and gig, the conversations are not there. They're more in tune in what they're doing and, and perfecting, and it is a craft. I'm a third generation gig maker, uh, taught uh, by my father. I've learned over time to hold a gig up and look at it. I can see how it's straight or it's crooked or the middle, the, we call it the middle yoke or the neck of it, how in line with it is the middle of the tines. When I make a gig and people come out and watch, it looks like that uh, that person watching, they, they can step right up and make that thing just like that. But believe me, it took me many, many times to make a gig. But yeah, my technique comes from watching dad make his gigs and I wanted to emulate so much that that's where that come from, making one just like his. One of the things that are my father and our grandparents were adamant on is doing you know going out and hunting gathering by certain times of the year and this was a very important part it, we'd always ask him if we could get caught it tonight and he would say boy tonight would not be a good night but uh, as you guys can look look up in the sky we have a full moon tonight and that was what he had always wanted when when he went and got caught it, he would say boy tonight would be a good night and the reason is that our ancestors believed that during the full of the moon, the crawdad uh, tails, the meat in their tails were fuller. Now the process of cooking them, you put them out and then you pat them dry and then uh, you put light, lightly salt, light pepper, and then we use cornmeal. So we, we, sh we coat them in cornmeal and then we get uh, hot grease up to about 350, 375. And um, my grandsons are fascinated because as soon as we drop the crawdads in the grease, the crawdads turn red and they ask me, well, why are they turning red? And uh, honestly, I mean, I don't know. It seems to have a, a reaction in the exoskeleton. I'm assuming it starts to dry out or this oil starts to penetrate it and cook the oils and then the, the skeleton itself. But and it, it, they, turn, they turn red and then uh, leave them in there for a little bit. And you, as uh, it's hard to explain when they're done. You can tell when they're done. Don't let them get too crispy because if you overcook them, the meat's tough. And if you undercook them, the meat's kind of raw, but there's there's a time in there. And, and uh, if you're a crawdad cook, you just kind of know. But some people they'll sample, and that's okay. And it's best if you sample one and try it. Uh, always try to you know try to get the mid-sized ones because you know the little ones are going to be cooked, and but the big ones they may need a little time. So 
And that, that's the kind of the process that we follow. But crawdad and fish has been like a mainstay or staple in our lives. It's uh, brought our family, you know, bring our family together and we get to enjoy each other's company. Nothing will ever change. We'll always have this bloodline that we call Cherokee. Or as you know, we say in Shalagani, you know, we are. That's who we are.